Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Charlie. And we are the Adventure Closet. And today, we're going to tell you everything we know about the beet harvest. So come along with us. Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz, and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. That's a full load of beets. Hope he doesn't hit a bump. <laughs> Make the beet drop. <laughs> right. There's some mad beets in that truck right there. That truck got some beets. It's a big old truck with the beets in the back. There's another beets truck. When a problem comes along? You must beat you it. You must whip it. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong song. <laughs> right? It should be beat it. You think it <laughs> I know. Jackson, I'm so. mixing Devo and Michael Jackson. <laughs> I think uh, what we're going to have here is an unbeatable experience here in Minnesota. Uh, he just dropped the beat. Oh, he did drop the Look beat. Look at the beat roll. Oh. Woo. That was dropping a beat. Yeah. <laughs> you guys witnessed it. Yeah. You let the beat drop. Caught here. We don't miss anything here over at the Adventure Closet. That's right. There's, <laughs> there's beats all over the road. You should get in the oncoming lane and see if you can beat them. Yeah. Uh, 2.6 miles from Turner. Oh, another he dropped beat. another beat. <laughs> this guy's dropping beats all over. <laughs> I feel like I gotta keep this footage rolling. Uh oh. Here we go, guys. Woo! Did you just beat that guy in the beat truck? I beat him. <laughs> He's been beat. We are entering the town of Crookston, Minnesota. Population 7,890. In a quarter mile, turn Ooh, left on US town. 75, Highway 75 bypass. It is a big town. Oh, and there's the place we're going to be staying. And that's the Crookston Hotel and Suites. That's or no, we're staying at the Crookston Inn. Yeah. Yeah. That's the cobblestone. This the one. Cobblestone. Oh, okay. Um, so we're staying at this guy here, and it's a really good deal. They're um, they're paying for most of it. It's just going to be fifty dollars a week each from our paychecks. So a hundred dollars a week for us to stay in a hotel, and it has free continental breakfast. Um, I think that's worth it for the showers and heat and. Just all the creature comforts while we're doing 12 hour work days. Hi guys. We're in a hotel room and I wanted to show you, we've already kind of lived in it so far, but I wanted to kind of show you what we're getting for um, $100 out of both of our paychecks combined a week. And it's just basic. Um, Basic toilet, um, another full length mirror, our lineup of boots. We've got spare boots because we're going to wreck some boots at this job. Some coats hung up here. We've got TV, microwave, fridge. Um, we've got food in there, extra food down there. 
Brought the Instapot. Um, it sucks oh. that we have two beds. Yeah, this is a real downside because they're two full size beds. Which but they seem. Like they, have the band, but they, look smaller. they seem smaller, and I know some couples will be like, "Yeah, I get my own bed," but I don't. It would be weird, but we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll probably end up in one of them. Yeah, and you'll be <laughs> on the corner, and I'll have all the blankets. Uh, and we have a workspace, which is great. So. That's everything we need. Co free continental breakfast between 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. Which one? Or, I'm sorry, and 9 a.m. 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. daily. So, depending on what shift we get, if we get a um, night shift, that will be dinner for us. If it's day shift, that will be breakfast. And continental breakfast, uh, it, it really is uh, hit or miss when you eat the diet needs, so we might not be able to have anything other than open. Get ready to go in to our orientation. We've got a few minutes before we go in. It's everything you would expect in an orientation. Um, basically, we met at this little building and there was a few others of us, some who had been, this is their like second or third year doing the beet harvest and then other newbies like us. And it just went over the safety protocols and like sexual harassment, um, lockout. Yeah, just the kind of basic stuff. Getting lots of signatures from us, to, you know, to show that we heard all that. And um, then we got our assigned location, and our location was Scandia, mm -hmm. which is like twenty minutes from our hotel, which. It's kind of a bummer because that means we got to commute 20 minutes one way. That's 40 minutes of driving. We thought that we were eight minutes away from where we worked, but we are like almost, we're probably 19, 20 miles from mm -hmm. where, we, where we're working, which that's two gallons of gas a day. That sucks. Yeah. So that kind of takes away from our bottom line. We're trying to not spend a lot of money to do this job so that it, that we profit more but that's okay we're it's our first year you got to expect you're gonna not get the cream of the crop <laughs> that's what I did there <laughs> uh, you're not gonna get the best choices but you know we were lucky to get a hotel and not everybody got to get a hotel tomorrow we have a safety meeting it's they call it work camper training it's probably just uh giving us basically an overview and then um the next day we have training at our actual site and then we'll figure out if we're day shift or night shift yeah, so it's still on the blue. Yeah. So you guys are going to learn um, as soon as we know. Um, but yeah, that was orientation today. Yeah. And we're going to kick back and relax and get ready to get back to it at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah. We're headed to the big safety meeting <laughs> down at the farm. <laughs> um, I guess we'll be at the main building today. Well, we found out yesterday that we're going to be working the night shift. That means we go in at 8 p.m. every night and then we are off at 8 a.m. Um, however, we haven't officially started yet. We still have a training to go to. It's uh, 6.23 a.m. Uh, we gotta be there by 6.45. And uh, it sounds like we got a couple hours of training to do this morning. And I'm tired. <laughs> But I have continental breakfast coffee, so I'm good. Realized we forgot to tell you about how um, yesterday's training went. It was safety training, so we went on to that main field and they gave us our hard hat, gloves, safety glasses, a safety vest, 
and then they took us out to a piler, which a uh, piler is this machine that um, kind of separates the dirt from the beets. Today is going to be more hands-on, which is where I learn my best is just doing. So, yeah. So we'll update you on how today goes after today. I mean, leave it to Charlie. He got a promotion on his first day before he even started. <laughs> so he gets paid like a dollar more an yeah, hour. Dollar, dollar something. Um, we'll get, let you guys know what the pay is like. Um, but... Me, my job, um, I'm just a peon. I'm just a little minion. I look like one. There's just me in my head. Yeah. Just, just a minion. Well, it's over here. <laughs> and uh, so I'm a sampler. And what that means is uh, when a truck pulls up, if they have a ticket, they'll I'll ask them if they have a ticket. They hand me this ticket, and I go over to this sh chute, and I wait for the truck to the lift their... Uh, their loader bucket or what do you call that they'll lift their thing up um, and then drop some beads yep like that and then uh, once they lift a second time to you know get everything out that's my cue to fill this bag and um, so I hit this button on the chute it fills with like you know, maybe five gallons of beets, and then um, tie the bag up. I put the ticket on the side of it, and I pile that bag next to the piling machine. And then I, meanwhile, I'm cleaning up as I go. So if there's beets and stuff in the way on the pathway of walking and um, pathway of the trucks, I'm cleaning up. I go back to the other side, and. Um, you know, wait for that truck to finish up. As soon as that truck pulls away, I'm coming in behind it, sweeping up the beads that fell out, because the beads just, they go everywhere. And um, it's just a lot of watching for trucks, cleaning up beads, filling sample bags over and over and over again. And really, it, it was kind of fun. I liked my job because I got to move around a lot. Um, I, I don't know if I'd like the other, but, jobs as much because you're sitting in one spot so I feel lucky that I got the position I did and I really enjoyed it and that's that you got anything to add to that so I have the operator position my position is to keep these trucks dumping the beats on the uh, conveyor belt trucks pull into the scale house to get weighed in then they come down the runway towards us and they pick a lane. They can go into uh, this side over here or this side over here. I use this lever here, it says forward, reverse, up, or lift and box down. So I tell them to go forward with that light right there. You see that red flashing light, that also is a sensor that is that yellow thing right there. They have to line their bed up with that yellow thing. And once they do, that red light turns on. And then I pull this lever down like that. And that lifts that. And then I tell them to lift up and that's that right there. They lift their box, dump beats on the conveyor belt. So this would be the left dump, and this would be the right dump. They dump their beats, and I usually wait until those top beats start sliding to tell them to stop lifting. And then the, uh, the beats come down this conveyor belt here, onto the main belt, through a, a cleaning screen, and then out to the boom to make the pile. And I have them lift up the rest of the way to dump their load. And then when they're done, I give them the down signal. Which tells them to bring their bed down. 
and then I wait for the truck and the beats to clear. And then I use this lever here to lift up the scoop to scoop the rest of the beats in there. And then I drop the scoop with the same letter, lever. And then when the truck pulls away, I use this, uh, this lever here to lower that door and say, hey, next truck, come on through. Rinse, repeat. That's my job for 12 hours. I, I mean, I kind of like the position I had because it keeps me busy um, uh, like nonstop. Yeah. Like the time just flew because uh, it, it was just truck after truck after truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we had zero breaks today, which uh, wasn't intentional. Yeah. It just um, there wasn't enough people to actually have breaks today. Yeah. Um, but and we worked six hours and it was we're training. training. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it it was. Uh, it was an experience. Yep. And then we're just waiting to find out when our first day is. Of the, it's supposed to be the for, first, but... I have to come back tomorrow. Oh, that's right. At 6.45 in the morning uh, to do it all over again. She gets to sleep. I'll be sleeping. She gets to sleep in the hotel. Yeah. Every... 30 minutes to 10 minutes, that fire alarm keeps going off, and it sucks, because we're trying to adjust our sleep schedule to be working nights, and it has been going off since about 11 a.m., and it is now 1 p.m. and we can't sleep. It's ridiculous. And there's no fire. Yeah, there's no fire. They're just like straightening their hair or something? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. But it's going to be a miserable first day of work. It's go time with the beats. We've had a couple days of stay pay. Uh, stay pay is where you just basically don't give up on them. You wait at your hotel uh, till they call you in and you get four hours of pay just for being available. So um, the temperatures weren't right, but now they are. It's Our shift starts at 11 p.m. tonight, uh, which is a little later than usual of what we're gonna expect over the coming days. Um, but we're headed to the beat mines. Yep. Time to beat it. Time to beat it. This might be our warmest night. Uh, beets need to be harvested between 35 and 65 degrees. We'll see how the temps progress as time goes by. I wanted to mention too, so that this is captured in video for you guys, we're adjusting to this graveyard shift, uh, being awake. The last two nights, would we make it up to, we stayed up, we tried to stay awake. Um, you stayed up till like, uh, like 10, which is what time it is now. And, and I <laughs> stayed up till midnight night. the first night. <laughs> And then last night, we were up till... I, I made it till five. I made it till six. You made it till five. Yeah. I made it till like slightly after 5 a.m. Because you went down and got uh, continental breakfast stuff for when we woke up. Um, and then in the middle of the day today, between um, 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., the fire alarm went off like five times 
Oh gosh, that was awful. I hope that is not a daily thing, but yeah. somebody's room next to us. We went out and checked. Everybody seemed to be going back in the room, so we just like tried yeah. to go back to sleep. But no, it was the building alarm. It wasn't the room next to us. Oh yeah. Well, anyways, we horrible. did not get a full night's sleep last night or today. Today, it's, it's all jumbling. It is all jumbling. <laughs> but we need to stay up till 8 a.m. when we clock out and then make it back to the hotel and hopefully fall asleep quickly because we got to be back in at 8 p.m. So, yep. oh, it's going to be a marathon. Yeah. But that's how you get paid. Big beat money. For lunches, today we packed... Uh, a loaf of bread and uh, from the continental breakfast um, Charlie grabbed a couple of peanut butter and jelly packets and then we have some trail bars and a couple of oranges and we're just gonna kind of just basically snack when we can throughout the day um, but we do get a half hour lunch and two 15 minute breaks, but um, Charlie's in charge of the breaks and he's gonna do the system that another, that the foreman suggested to you, um, where basically the first hour of the day, everybody's on deck. And then after that rotating, everybody gets a half hour break. So instead of the 15 minute breaks, you, it just keeps rotating. And then the last hour of the day, nobody gets breaks and uh, then it just carries over on the same pattern through the next day. Here's one of the pilers. That's what it looks like. We're still on the main road out here. Looks like and our the pilers, uh, far one is the one we work. Looks like there's no beats in front of our pilot anymore. Oh, so we got a clean slate today. And then this little building here, this is where we clock in every day. So we go in scale time, house. it's the scale house um, where they weigh the trucks when they come in, but also our time check-in is in there. This whole thing shakes when I'm up here all night long. That's the main belt right there. We got these little signal lights for forward, lift, down, and reverse. And they're fancy little duct tape things. And they control this little light right here. Forward, up, down. Then you see the trucks are lining up behind us here. So we're getting ready to go. Day one of the bee harvest. Let's hit it. <laughs> it is midnight. Should be uh, interesting next week or two. Fun. Trucks, trucks will all line up down here. And eventually this whole thing will be 20 feet high of beats all the way down to where those lights are. That's pretty far. It's after 8 a.m. and we finished our first real shift. That's right. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I was sweating all night, believe it or not. And I was freezing. <laughs> I, I just stand still yeah. up in the booth. But I get to, I actually really enjoy that I get to move around and, uh, you know, do stuff. So I'm really filthy dirty. Uh, my boots are caked. Um, I'm going to show you guys some footage of my boots. Um, the windshield of the car got nasty yeah. dirty. Too, oh yeah, the car gets there. dusty. But I have a couple tips. So um, I brought my Crocs with me, so I changed into those when we leave to go home. Um, and then I put my boots in a bag. And then also another tip that I found with my safety glasses is we always have a glasses cleaner cloth um, in the dash. And it was so handy on my brakes because your glasses get nasty and then you start sweating and 
yeah, so that is definitely a tip I have not seen for the beet harvest is have that handy. It makes a huge difference. This is just her first full day. It's not even like a wet, <laughs> rainy day either. It's great. <laughs> So, and I probably, it probably added a pound to each boot. Um, so it only gets worse from here. But uh, just thought I'd show you guys what to expect on that. Off to the beet mines. How are you feeling today? Feeling like dropping some beets. <laughs> I'm feeling. Up, well, oh, good. I need to come up with new beet jokes. <laughs> I am feeling a little sore, but actually surprisingly good. I fell asleep like right away <laughs> when we got to the hotel last night or this morning. Yeah. It's so weird. Like <laughs> last night, this morning. It was what this day morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here we are again. Yep. Today we're working nine to eight, so 11 hours tonight. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to get down to 35. My hands got cold pretty pretty much last night, uh, but I wasn't moving around a lot because I'm up in that cab all night. I was actually sweating it because I was moving around so much. Yeah, so um, complete opposites. Yeah, but tonight it's going to be windy, so that wind chill might be a different story. Yeah, it's supposed to be gusts of up to 35. Tomorrow night should be interesting. It's going to get down to 25. It's a huge drop in temperature. Which is too cold to do beats, so I don't know if we'll even be working tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And this is October right yes. now. So, all right, let's get to work. Let's do it. Do it. That's what it looks like when there's beats on it. And then Liz is uh, right over there waiting to uh, take a sample. Part of Liz's job is to uh, keep the uh, grounds clean. With these little scoops and shovels and stuff. See that giant 20 foot high pile of beets? That goes pretty far back. <laughs> Break room chronicles. <laughs> uh, there's this lady who drives a truck. All these people are new to driving, well, a lot of them are new to driving trucks. But this particular lady, first time I saw her come through my lineup here. She like scraped her truck on the side of the machine here, like pretty badly, and just kept riding with it. She probably could have corrected it. Forgive my sass, but you'll understand in a minute. Um, second time around, she comes through and it's time to dump her pay dirt. And she's got to do this K turn and back in because the, the boom got in the way. Sometimes that happens. And, um, the boom is the thing that, that drops that drops the beats. I'm not good at dropping beats. Um, but she starts to back up and then just like guns it and like almost hits the machine. And I have to like run out of the way to not die. And then so I go to the side of her truck, catch her eye and, you know, motion for her to correct. And she just like drives off without her pay dirt. And so I had to dump it on the ground and sweep it all up. And that sucked. Break Room Chronicles. I smell like beets. That's all. Sun's coming up. That means we have about an hour left to go. I'm on my last break. 
And I realize I keep calling the tear dirt pay dirt. That's how you know you're a rock hound. <laughs> Not tired. Not night night yet. We made it another day. We did. It was so cold last night. Uh, I have one, two, three, four layers on, and I'll still freeze. Yeah. <laughs> and funny story. <laughs> Remember the the gal that almost hit me? <laughs> she drove off with a lot of beats. You tell them about the guy that almost hit you? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, so she... She was, so when you pull up to the scale house, you're, when you're a dump truck, uh, you, you have to pull onto the scale. Well, her back wheels were off the scale, so it was a 2,000 pound difference uh, for her weight. So uh, the lady told her that she needed, that, that her back wheels were off and she needed to pull forward. Well, she apparently thought that that meant her back wheels had fallen off of her truck so she drove she took off I assume to go back to her home base and get her truck looked at and then she came back and she's like oh I thought you said my wheels fell off <laughs> so yeah not the, not the sharpest uh, tool in the shed but yeah. Uh, yeah and imagine being the guys on the ground you know grabbing the ticket from her and then she just drives off from you. Yeah. No, no reason. Imagine being the, the, the gal on the ground that uh, was directing her back and then she stops and then she just slams backwards almost hitting you. That yeah. was crazy. I hope she never comes through my lane again. I, I, really... I hope so too because she was... Oh, yeah, yeah, she's trouble. But so far, ultimately, the job is it, it's fun until you're tired, <laughs> and then you're just tired and you're cold. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go sleep. Me too. Good night. Good night. As the sun goes down, we head to work. There's a beats on the ground still. all over this town. There it is. I bet you these people are ready to say beat it to the beats once beat season's over. I gotta come up with better beat jokes. That's all I got is beat it. And... I wonder how many insurance claims each year are from beats. Yeah. Where they grow beats. I don't know. They're kind of dangerous. Yeah, because we were, I mean, as you saw, we were driving here on the way here and uh, there was beets falling off the truck and so we had to had to dodge them but uh, didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night yeah, I got a whopping three hours I got like maybe four yeah we're gonna be killing it today uh, we're always killing it right now it is 44 degrees and it should get down to 25 and I was cold last night at 35 so this is going to be quite the experience so my outfit today is I have a thermal long uh, sleeve shirt underneath I have a sweatshirt hoodie I have this flannel hood hoodie and then I'm going to wear this big Carhartt jacket and then I'm wearing three pairs of pants, so thermals, a uh, pair of leggings, and a pair of sweatpants. And then I'm wearing two pairs of socks, and I'm probably going to wear two pairs of gloves. And I have this buff beanie, um, so hopefully I'll be warm enough. Yeah, hopefully. Check it out. It's a beat tractor. <laughs> and today, for my outfit, I have 
a thermal top on, a, a t-shirt on top of that, and then I'm going to be wearing a flannel, and then I'm going to be wearing two coats, at least, and then um, two pairs of socks, uh, my normal hiking pants, and then on top of my hiking pants I have thermal um, insulated pants that I'm going to be wearing. Did I say two pairs of socks? No. Two pairs of socks. I'm wearing socks over my socks. And then um, my our, our insulated gloves and uh, a beanie, of course. And I might have to throw on my balaclava. Balaclava. Balabala. It's my bushka. Yeah. Uh, beat truck. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so it got cold last night at 35, and I was wearing a lot of clothes last night, so hopefully tonight I'll be at least comfortable. We'll see. At least we get to catch every sunset and sunrise. That's true. It kind of tells us when our shift begins and ends. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Once I start getting blinded by the sun coming up, our shift is over. Yeah. Such a glorious thing when sunrise happens because it's like, yeah. just know everything was coming. Yeah. <laughs> you know, those people are going to show up and let us go home. <laughs> All right. We have arrived. As you can see, there's two 20 foot tall stacks of beets there. We stacked all those last night. Well, for the last 12 hours, they've been stacking these beets. That's true. There's a tired crew waiting okay. on us. Yep. And uh, no bee trucks lined up for him, which is amazing. Chronicles from the break room, number 247, day three, I think. I might be wrong on those numbers. It feels like day 20. <laughs> Oh, it's actually been a slower night tonight, which kind of makes it harder on your body with the standing still. I'm glad that we have this extra task of like keeping the grounds clear of beets because um, it gets you moving, the blood pumping, it's so cold out. But it's 1 a.m. and been here since 7.45 p.m. and I still have seven hours of work to do. Just to put that into perspective, it is long, long shifts. But it's still a doable job and uh, we have a good crew. Um, And that's all I have to say about that. The safety lady came by and I was wearing all my proper PPE and I was doing safe stuff, so she gave me a sucker. It's a good day. It's a cold one. It is a bit cold. And we're on break at the same time. Yeah. It's not a super technical job. The worst part about it is uh, the cold. At night, it, it's, uh, it gets pretty cold. And it's, uh, you're not moving around much here. You definitely get cold. Easily, I'm wearing two layers of gloves, uh, two coats of flannel, a, a thermal, a t-shirt. Uh, I'm going to be putting on my second pair of bands and break. Uh, I'm wearing two pairs of socks and I'm still, my, my fingers are the coldest. Like, even with two pairs of gloves, these are, these are nice little polar penguin gloves. They're insulated. They didn't provide these. They provide you with some really thin gloves, which uh, I would be completely frozen with those. And then uh, I got these like white gloves underneath which they provide you with the white gloves. 
You're constantly up here uh, shaking because the machine shakes. The whole room is shaking. And then when the beats get too high on the file, like this, they move it back. And, and then you kind of got to hold on when they move it back. So you got to be able to pay attention to two trucks at the same time. Uh, it is intimidating at first. Uh, you know, they threw me into this the, my first day here uh, because I've, I've driven a forklift before. So, um, I've got experience pulling levers and pushing buttons. <laughs> they said if you're good at video games, which I, I play video games all the time, um, that you would be, you would be good as an operator and I can see why. 12 hour days. 12 hours is a long time to be standing in one spot, uh, being super cold. Um, so, if you can handle that, you can handle this job. Some of these trucks have a conveyor belt system. They don't tip up. That's kind of cool. I've never seen that before. See, it's just a little conveyor belt on the floor that moves everything forward. That's kind of cool. I wonder if that's cheaper that way or what? But interesting. And they seem to be a little bit longer trucks, too, by a few feet. Chronicles from the break room. Today has been a better day than all the rest. I got like eight hours sleep last night. Or yesterday, or whatever you want to call it. And... The night before that, I only got three hours, and man, what a difference getting good sleep makes. Last night when we were driving home, I was like nodding off. I barely had the energy to walk up the stairs to our hotel room and take a shower and eat some food. Like, thankfully, when we get off, the continental breakfast is still being served because it's morning time, and sometimes they put steak fries in the continental breakfast and they're like the best things you could ever have and it's like something hot and already made and like it's heaven so I hope that they have steak fries when I'm off tonight this morning but another reason the day is better is it's been busier. It's been like truck after truck and um, it just, you know, when you're constantly busy, constantly having to focus, uh, time just flies. And it's amazing what the human body can endure. Like being out in these freezing temperatures, standing on concrete, there's no place to sit. You can't sit at all. Because um, the pilot moves and stuff. So there's, you can't, be resting on that thing because you don't know when it's going to move to it's always like a surprise because I'm on the other side of the controls Buenas dias Buenas noches Oh yeah, Buenas noches It's nine at a time This is our day five of full day shifts Yeah, something like that Yeah um, How are you feeling today? Sore, tired. Um, Same. Ready to get after it. I got about three and a half hours sleep last night. Um, it's very difficult to adjust to an opposite sleeping schedule, at least for me. Um, By the time we're adjusted, it'll be over. Right. It's going to be weird adjusting back when once we hit the road again and we don't have a hotel to be lazy at well, like we've been awesome. lazy at our hotel <laughs> I know. sleeping there and going to work uh, it'll be impossible to sleep during the day in a van yeah. it's beautiful sun set. I'll capture it for them hold on 
I think this is the best part about this shift is the sun sunsets and the sunrises, like catching them. It's not often you catch both in a day, and every day <laughs> we catch both, <laughs> and it's beautiful. They are getting yeah. further apart though, yeah. uh, quickly. Damn, I've never seen more beets in my life. There's yeah. millions of beets. Our pile that we've been working on is like growing. It's like this huge mountain of beets. Like I want to climb it so bad, but I think that's an OSHA violation. Well, if you're off the clock, you can do it. Heck yeah. So you may have noticed that these beets aren't beet red, like like beets should be. So beets, from what I gather, grow on a two-year stage. So the first year, they grow to the size of the beets that were, were getting harvested. And they, um, they produce a lot of sugar content to get them through the winter. And then the second year that they grow is when they turn red and they get, you know, ripe enough to eat. So, and then after that, they'll go to seed. So what they do is they grab the beets right when their sugar content is at the highest so that, um, so that they're ready to go into the winter stage and make it through winter. So that's how they get the most sugar out of these beets is they get them before they turn red or go to seed. Uh, I heard somebody say something like five gallons of beets makes two pounds of sugar or something. We gotta look that up yeah. because I, I heard it was like eight pounds of beets is a pound of sugar. About approximately 17% of the original beet weight will be turned into sugar. It will take six pounds of beets to make one pound of sugar, while 10 pounds of beets yields 1.7 pounds of sugar. And those beets are heavy, so it, it, it yeah. probably just takes a couple beets to make a pound of sugar, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, that's a lot of sugar coming in, though, because these trucks are, like, packed with, like, thousands and thousands of pounds of beets. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Let's take a walk down the beet pile, guys. It may not look like it, but these beet piles are 20 feet tall. And they go on for about a quarter mile of just beets. Let me show you a little reference. Beats of all shapes and sizes. <laughs> so you got you got this little beat here. Little beat. That's probably half a pound. Let's see if we can find us a big beat. This one beet right here probably weighs more than five pounds. And that's one beet. Not crazy? So just give you a little perspective on how much beets this is. And there's another pile right behind the camera here. 20 feet tall, probably about quarter mile long by now and we're only halfway done that's almost as big as my head and that's probably almost 10 pounds jeez so there's the back of the beet pile and all the way down there where those trucks are is about half of the beets that uh, we're supposed to be piling. All right, my break's almost over. Whew, it is cold out tonight. I didn't think it was gonna get this cold tonight. The beats don't stop. This is a 
another one of the uh, conveyor belt trucks. They're a lot longer than these trucks, which have the dump on them. They look like they're probably five feet longer. But this one's kind of interesting because it's, it's, it's a square box, but it's sloped on the inside. And the conveyor is just, you know, about three feet wide on the inside. And the conveyor is just like three feet wide on the inside. I'll show you when he's about done. See, it's just a little okay. flap of a conveyor belt. It just flips out, which is kind of neat. It's kind of an ingenious and semi-cheap way of doing a dump truck. told you guys that the beds are so small here and but me and Charlie didn't want to sleep on separate beds because we we're just we we're just not like that but Charlie pushed them together so now we have this like bigger than a king like what would you call that two double beds together a double a double 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 king. I don't know. It's dark. Day six. We're headed into work tonight. Yeah. Um, yesterday was hard, and today we are sore and, and tired. tired and hopped up on Tylenol and ibuprofen. So and energy drinks. Not yet. Oh yeah. Right. But we just we stopped and got a case of Red Bull, which. It's not typical for us to do that, but it's it's kind of needed when you're working the night shift like this and long hours. So yeah. So yeah, hopefully we have a good day today. My lips are super chapped from being out in the cold, and it was a bit windy last night. So I have chapstick with me today. Hoping that helps. Um, last night the other piler went down, so um, I had four hours. Of straight trucks at the end Stop. of my shift. Yeah. Um, it was crazy. It was like it was never ending because sometimes, like, you'll you might have a little bit of a space in between trucks or even a long space sometimes. Yeah, usually at night you do have a, a bit of a gap. Yeah, but last night it was just truck, 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 truck. Truck, truck, truck. And if something goes wrong, like, you spill some tear dirt on the ground. Uh, Clean you gotta clean it up and you're holding up the process and oh my goodness you know I'm not gonna lie it's not a, it's a simple job but it's not an easy job it's very physically demanding yeah um, and, and draining yeah even y your job is physically demanding because that machine's just shaking all day and he's on his feet and yeah, sore and then you got to keep your head on a swivel yeah and mentally demanding too because all the moving parts that you're controlling so so yeah just wanted to update you guys uh, we're we're going in and it looks like sunset is a little bit earlier now yeah. so we kind of we're kind of getting the tail end of it it's not as pretty as it has been so and I'm sure nights are getting longer by the day yeah Pretty soon, sun sunrise will be gone too by the time we're off. Day 734. Just kidding. <laughs> it's day 7. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are headed in at the early time of 7.25 p.m. That's right. Excuse me. Bless you. There's a lot of beet dust in the air. Beet dust in the air. Everywhere. Beet dust everywhere. 
right, we're tired, but we're starting another day. It's our seventh consecutive day of working 12 hour shifts. 12 hour shifts. Oh, no, no. We worked eight hours the first day, ten hours the second day, so. Details, schmeetails. Yeah, schmeetails. It's the supervisor. And today I'm operating the boom, which is this big thing here that feeds the beads into the pile. And uh, what you do is you build up the corners here on each side, and then you fill in the middle, swing back a couple times, and then you come over here. This is how you can pull it left or right. You turn that over, and the whole piling machine moves back like four feet and uh, you start building up your corners again. And uh, this is where I take samples from. So about 40% of the trucks will need samples to test their sugar content because the farmers get paid based off of that. And so you take a ticket from them, you slide it in this little windowed thing here, and then put your bag up here. You either wait for this light to come on or you wait for them to do their second lift on the dump. And it puts beets in these bags, and we line them up here, and they come uh, pick them up with the tractor. This is a sugar beet. They're white, not like the red ones you see in the store. Um, they get even bigger than this. Like, I've seen some bigger than my head. Um, it's not too common, but they're in there. Um, apparently, they taste sweet. I haven't tried one, so I'm going to snag one and, and try it. Um, Apparently the smaller ones are sweeter, so we'll we'll test it on a smaller one, but yeah, and they're heavy. And it's I think it was like six pounds of beets makes makes one pound of sugar. So this is probably like three, four pounds right here. That's crazy. That's a lot of sugar. So we came in this morning on day seven and one of our teammates and we've had an awesome team, but one of our teammates um, he he didn't come in. He called in and said uh, he's done. And he had told me towards the end of the night yesterday that his enthusiasm was waning. He has a bulged disc and sciatica. And uh, Charlie and I both definitely understand back issues. So um, he just, you know, he was done. So it you're considering doing this make sure you've got a strong back and um it's gonna be hard standing on your feet on concrete all day but anyways that brought our crew down to a skeleton crew we have you know one person on each side of the piler and then we have our operator which is charlie and so um i got trained on the boom today so now i can operate the boom which is cool uh, it's kind of fun, just controlling it, swinging it, building your pile. Um, it's not hard at all. And just one more thing to think about. It's more multitasking, I guess, while you're directing trucks, filling their dirt and uh, collecting samples. And I have a bunch of stuff in my hair. But it's been a slow night, too, which is good to be learning when it's not too crazy. But they say we're at, like, 70% done with the harvesting beets, so the end is near. Hoping we get another weekend so we get that time and a half and double time on Sunday. That'd be sweet. That'd be real sweet. But, I don't know, so far, I think I would do this again, even though we're, like, in the middle thick of it. Um, yeah, I mean, it sucks standing, it sucks being in the cold, but I think the pay is worth it, and the experience. I, I'm so glad we did this. I mean, I would have never had this experience, and it makes me want to try other things, try different little jobs that I never would have otherwise. I mean, I, I'm, 
I was an insurance agent before this, before we took off with the van. And, you know, it's just ingrained in me that, you know, I had to have that nine to five job and um, steady pay and all this. But it, that just tied me down. We, there's so many different jobs out here that we're learning about as we meet more nomads and stuff that you will always find work on the road and you'll always be able to make the ends meet. No problem. So I'm not worried. You shouldn't be either. I was just informed by the scale house that the next truck after this has some unusually large beats. So I'm showing you these guys, which are these are average size beats uh, that uh, are in this truck, so we can compare them to the next truck. The nice folks over at the scale house, which is over that away, uh, they cooked up some beets for us, some sugar beets, and also gave us some raw diced ones too. So I'll tell you how they taste. Okay, so first off, let's try. Let's try a cooked one. You know, it tastes like milder than like a regular beet you get at the store, but sweeter. That's kind of interesting. It's good. I like it. Okay, cook this good. Let's, I should have tried raw first. Tastes the same raw, except it has like an apple-y texture. Or like what a raw potato, but not so much raw potato, more just a very crisp apple. It's actually quite good. It's actually quite good. I'd eat that. I just did. Hmm. Three hours left of day seven. It's after the fall equinox. And did you guys know that the first full moon is the harvest moon? I uh, upgraded the dust cave. Yush. <laughs> I upgraded the duct tape handles. Now they're actual knobs. Not bad. You know, it helps. Not having that sticky mess. Now they they don't stick like they did before. Good stuff. Day eight. Just had to fill the tank again because it's a 20 some mile drive there and 20 some mile drive back. And uh, three hours of work got us a full tank of gas. <laughs> if you want to put it in that kind of perspective, actually yeah. a little over three hours of work because it was more than 60 bucks to fill the tank. But uh, today is day eight, right? Uh, yep, day eight of working consecutively. Yeah, and we are, uh, it was a little warm today, so we can't, we're coming in two hours late. So it's a 10 hour night instead of a 12 hour. Yeah, so it should go fairly <laughs> As quick. quickly as 10 hours can go. 
I mean, but it's warmer quicker. tonight. I'm not super layered up. Yeah. But I have my layers just in case. Yeah. Don't want to be caught without extra layers because that would really suck. Uh, we just talked to our friends Dave and Carrie over at One Adventure at a Time on YouTube. Yeah. And they're doing the Montana one in Sydney and they have had mud and snow and crazy windstorms. Their uh, experience is much different than our experience, so yes. it, it does go by the state and the site. Yeah, in fact, I think we'll um, link a couple of their videos. They did a few shorts, uh, uh, their experience, and it just, uh, I feel bad for them. <laughs> it was rough. Yeah. And uh, they're, this is their third year doing the beet harvest, so they're veterans at this. Um, so they, uh, they definitely deserved a good year <laughs> of good weather. So maybe they'll come to Minnesota next year and... Yeah. Maybe we'll do it again next year. I'm feeling positive about it. The first several days were hard to adjust, yeah. but um, now that we've adjusted, I mean, it's still hard on the body and long hours, but... Um, and a lot depends on your crew. Uh, yeah. We have a good crew. We have a good foreman. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it's really the luck of the draw on your experience as well. Yep, Absolutely. All right, let's get our day started. There's Charlie up in his ivory tower, waiting on trucks. It's a slow night tonight. Which is good. Yeah. So when we do see one coming from the scale house, what do we say? We got one! We got one! But we don't. <laughs> There's no trucks coming. So when we're piling the beads and we've completed a row, we've got to move the piler back and uh, has these kind of traction wheels here and it's been losing traction. So we've been having to put sand down so it'll move. And so when I'm running this side, I'm keeping it clean over here at beads. And then when the truck's done unloading over there and Charlie's given them all their commands, then I wave them over here and they park right under this uh, tear dirt return. And I hit this button, hold it down until the big clump of dirt comes out and then I wave them on their way. And all the beats they drop off, spill out that end. And uh, yeah. I'll be operating the boom later today. This is the tool I use the most for cleaning up. It's really quite handy. Just kind of scrapes everything up. But I also have a big shovel. This is Liz and her giant beat. It's huge. It's probably like 15 pounds. <laughs> That's crazy. I wish I had a way to this that's insane get a picture too so that over there is the super piler uh can buy a lot faster as you can see it's a bit ahead of our piler our piler is probably um our foreman said it was probably about 60 years old, but uh, it runs like a champ. When everything's shut down like this, it's super quiet. But this is our piler. And that's where I sit. And there's Liz. And we have a truck coming in right there so i gotta get back up there and dump that truck and there's opal well it's three more hours left in the night on day eight and things are slowing down significantly 
Um, there's like four farmers running right now. Um, so we just see a truck every, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Um, so it's a lot of just standing around cleaning that doesn't need to be cleaned. <laughs> um, but I don't mind. I'm getting paid to stand around, so I'll take it. But I sure am tired. I haven't been able to get a full night's sleep since starting this. It's very difficult to adjust to graveyard. Um, I sleep like three hours. If it's a good night, I get four hours. I got four hours today. So, I still feel tired, but hoping I can sleep better tomorrow. Maybe I'll refrain from caffeine tomorrow night. At least not as much. Let's see if that helps, because I could use some sleep big time. <sighs> and one more day, almost down. Raining. And windy. Yikes. Time to go back from break. Well, it's the first time it started raining on us. But uh, I got a, a top. Poor Liz is out there. She can stand under the dirt return to keep from getting rained on. But uh, yeah, kind of feel bad. Nice thing uh, about this is, it, obviously it's quiet in here, I can shut the machine down because there's so few trucks that um, I just keep an eye out this back door here and see when they're coming. And once a truck comes, I sound the horn telling people that I'm starting it up. It's literally just me and Liz right now. The other guy's on break. We had a team of four people. Unfortunately, one uh, one guy who's really good uh, had quit um, a couple days ago. And th what sucks is he quit, and it it just like s got dead slow after that. So that kind of sucks for him to um, have quit, and then it. The job became super easy. Uh, I think he had bad knees and you have to stand. I got a bad back. Um, and, you know, sometimes it hurts to stand for such a long period of time. But, uh, you know, you do have to make money. <laughs> the world ain't free. I got to keep checking to see if there's a truck coming down, down the road there. Um... But yeah, so this is our first bit of uh, bad weather. It's just been cold up until now, and now it's cold and rainy. Um, I do feel bad for Liz, though. But we only have like another hour of our shift left, so should be good. And it's supposed to stop raining before our shift starts tonight. It's so weird because it's dark, but it is 5 a.m. right now? 6 a.m. maybe. Uh, what time is it? Oh, it's 7 a.m. Nice. Um, yeah, so 7 a.m. We only got one hour left. Uh, crew comes to relieve us actually at 7.45, 50-ish. Um... And then we get to clock out and head home and sleep. But uh, I have a truck coming, so I gotta go. Bye now. It's 
raining and a little bit of snow slurries. It's cold, but our shift is almost over. So I can deal with that. Look at that stack of beads. That's like over 20 feet high. Day nine. Day nine. Let's get it. <laughs> it's not a, it's sad. Day nine. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it. We were just talking about if we would do this again, and we were realizing how lucky we got to have this site, which is a great site. Uh, the crew that we're on, even though we lost a person, um, it, it's still a great crew, just, you know, the three of us. Um, we lucked out with a good foreman, um, and we... And we lucked out with uh, with the weather, so that was like four luck outs on this trip. It's pretty lucky. That's pretty lucky. <laughs> and we would do this again, yes. And we would. Even though we are sore and tired. Yeah, and um, our next experience may be different than this. Your experience may be different with than this but this gives you a general idea of the beet harvest but our break's almost over so let's beat it update is today day nine or ten somebody was saying it's day nine yesterday yeah so then that means today's day ten yeah. i think we've had it wrong this whole time and i don't know we were shorting this. No wonder it felt like a longer time. <laughs> it's it's all just kind of a blur. Yeah. But it is uh, 36, 37 degrees uh, right now. And we are heading in to work. Uh, it's supposed to snow tonight. It snowed a little tiny bit last night. Um, not enough to even film. But it did snow last night. Um. And uh, it's gonna snow tomorrow night too, which sucks. It's gonna be a cold one. It's gonna be cold. All right, I'll see you guys at work. Yep. Back to the beet mines. Starting to snow a little bit here. Still dumping beets. Snow's starting. Yeah, I wish we had daylight. I'm not sure she's got a lot of glare on. I know. Yeah. So we're like on the last day and Charlie gets a heater. There's like no trucks going, so we're just hanging out, waiting for trucks to come bring us beets, watching the snow. Today we believe is day 10. Could be day 11. <laughs> Could be day 9. No, it's definitely not day 9. Then it's probably day 10. <laughs> uh, they all just kind of melt together. Yeah, at this point, working these hours, you're all flipped upside down. Yeah. Um, we were told that last night could have been our last night, and uh, here we are. Heading to work again. Yeah, last night we were shifting off with the other team, hour on, hour off. Uh, yeah. A lot of standing around waiting for trucks because we were really out there working for like five trucks the whole night. Uh, we even had zero trucks between 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So there was like four hours without a truck at all. Yeah, which was crazy. Yeah, so honestly, we worked less than six hours yesterday, yeah. and uh, we got paid for 12. Hi. Hi. We are, we were supposed to go into work tonight. Yeah. And we called, there's this little hotline that we call, and that tells. Tells us, hey, you're yeah. going to work tonight. Yeah. So we decided to play hooky. No. The <laughs> foreman called, and he's like, 
don't listen to the hotline. You're not coming in tonight. You're coming in in the morning. Yeah, in the morning to work the day shift. Our heads are spinning. But it'll be our last day, and it's a Sunday, so we get double time pay. Yeah, But so that's a plus. We're going to have to clean the piling machine. And we're going to be so tired because uh, we're working nights normally, and now we... <laughs> we're gonna work the morning, but we did. We uh, we were in Minnesota. We drove over to North Dakota. We're gonna get some dinner and treat ourselves because we've been working so hard. Yeah. Oh look, it's a little bit of daylight left on our way to work. Just kidding. It is 7 a.m. and uh, we were told yesterday that we need to switch back our schedules from nights to days. So, <laughs> Just as we were getting ready to go in. <laughs> Just as we were getting ready to go into work yesterday. And uh, this, this is pretty much, I'm pretty sure this is guaranteed to be our last day. Uh, they're bringing us in to help clean uh, once the last trucks roll through. And uh, that is it for beat season, uh, 12 days. Uh, day 11, we, technically day 11, we, uh, well, actually, wait, we worked day 11, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, so day, day 12, uh, we didn't work, technically, and this would be, make day 13 for us. But, uh, basically by working today on a Sunday, us combined, we're making almost $80 an hour today. Yeah. Every hour we're there. Yep. So that's pretty cool. I'm down for eighty dollars an hour. It works out to be like seventy, so it's close yeah. to eighty. Details, schmeetails. Yeah. After taxes, I'm sure it's less. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, should be interesting. Uh, I don't. We haven't done a day crew with the night crew since uh, training, and uh, yeah. We'll see. All right, let's hit it. Well, this is what it looks like during the day. Because uh, today we're working a day shift. And today we got to clean. There's Opal down there. And uh, there's the trucks coming in at the scale house. There's one dumping at Tyler one. Tyler one is the super piler. Tyler one is the super piler. Goes about three times faster than this piler. It's got a bigger, um, it's got a bigger main here, and uh, probably bigger uh, side dumps as well. I'm lucking out because I actually get a heater up here and uh, don't tell anyone but I get to listen to music up here as well. Today is our last day for sure. Probably be done by noon and then we have to clean this entire giant machine here. Um, like all that dirt right there, all that dirt right there, all the dirt that's on this main, all the dirt that's on the boom. We all, we gotta clean all that today. But we're making double time. So, double time as in we're getting paid twice as much today because it's a Sunday. Oh, fun fact, this cable is 480 watts. Uh, this cable costs about $1,000 a foot. And I'd say it's well over 100 feet long. Um, so, you do that math. And that's just the cable for this machine. <laughs> I find it crazy that this giant machine is built literally to make piles. Like, it, like it's a million dollar machine at least. And its sole purpose is to make piles of beats. Weird. Well, we did it. We 
did it. Uh, we completed the bee harvest. Uh, last day was uh, a bit of work. Yeah, we had to. We had like trucks running for a big part of the day, and then we got to take the very last truck, which was awesome. Um, and then. Uh, we had to clean the machine and that was interesting. I volunteered to go into the belly of the beast until the dirt returned. And so I uh, got to like peel these big sheets of mud and stuff off the inside. And that was satisfying. <laughs> it was really satisfying and I'm glad that I volunteered because nobody wanted to do it. But it was fun and I was like protected from the wind in there. I could feel it, could hear it like howling. Yeah, and really the cool. wind is brutal when it's this cold. Um, I was cleaning off the boom, and uh, the, uh, all the dirt just kept blowing in my eyes and mouth. It sucked. <laughs> I still have, like, grit in my teeth. Yeah. Uh, but I'm leaving this experience feeling very positive about it. Um, and I would do it again next year. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure we will. And uh, our crew was amazing. Our foreman was amazing. The weather uh, was amazing. Yeah, the weather was great. I mean, besides it being really cold and yeah, yeah. a couple days of rain, and but the rain wasn't that bad, and the snow wasn't that bad. We really got lucky on weather. Um, but now. We have like a day or two left in the hotel. We're just gonna relax, get some videos edited. We're really needing to pay some attention to our channel. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, back to the swing of things. But this was really cool. And uh, one thing. Uh, you guys are getting our honest opinion and honest experience and all this, but if you are considering doing this, doing the beet harvest, uh, we do get a kickback if uh, you put us down as a referral. Uh, so if you are doing that, you can just put down our names, Liz and Charlie Duncan, and uh, our address is in the information box, box below. Uh, you don't have to do that, but they do send us $100. But, um, but do know it is hard work um, because you're on your feet for 12 hours a night on concrete. We had hardly any days off, um, but yeah, it's over. It, today's day 11. Oh, day 13? Yeah. Okay, today's day 13, and we had, like, yeah, one night off, but we had to come in the next yeah, morning, so it's like half a day off, yeah. but, but we worked solidly through. Um, so, you know. Yeah, 10 hours in on the last day, too. Yeah. So, it's not, I'm not going to say it's easy, but for the... The pay and everything, it's worth it. All right, we are leaving the hotel. It is 26 degrees out, and there is ice crystals on the windshield. And our van is a mess. Oh, yeah. Because we've just been, you know, surviving for the last. 13, 14 days. But uh, this should be quite an adventure because it's going to be pretty cold the next week. Yeah. And we're experiencing we'll, Minnesota cold. Yeah. And we still don't really have a clue what we're doing next. We do want to stay north, but uh, this might drive us south quicker than we expected. So come along for the ride and let's find out where we're going.
Look, more beat trucks. Look, truck full of beats. Beat truck, beat truck. It's another beat truck. And another beat truck. And another beat truck. And another beat truck. Check this out. So there's a beat truck in front of us. There's another beat truck. Here's another beat truck. Beat truck. And a beat truck. And a beat truck. And a pickup truck. Ah, you thought it was a beat truck, didn't you? Uh, they're loading beat trucks there. Another beat truck. Another beat truck. Beat truck. Another beat truck. Beat truck. Beat truck. Another beat truck. There's a beat truck behind us. Beat truck. Beat truck. Beat truck. Truck getting loaded by beats. Beat truck. Another beat truck. Beat truck. Beat truck. Oh, what's this right here? Could it be? Beat truck. Another beat truck. Beat truck. Beat truck. Beat truck. Truck getting loaded by beats. Beat truck. Another beat truck. Look, more beat trucks. Look, truck full of beats. Beat truck, beat truck. It's another beat truck. And another beat truck. And another beat truck. And another beat truck. Here's another beat truck. And a beat truck. And a beat truck. And a pickup truck. Ah, you thought it was a beat truck, didn't you? Another beat truck. Another beat truck. Beat truck. Another beat truck. Beat truck. Beat truck. Another beat truck. There's a beat truck behind us. Beat truck. Beat truck. Beat truck. Oh, what's this right here? Could it be? Beat truck. Beat trucks in my sleep. Well, that was fun. That was so much fun. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon, and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye now.